What um what woods are on your ukulele? Um, curly maple, and nice. then uh, cedar. Cool. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. And then ebony, and then curly maple. That looks badass. Yeah. Wait till <laughs> I show you the. Is it the same? Um, or you got you got different stuff, it's right? It's similar. It's like the younger sister. This is the gothic younger sister, and then this is the older sister. Nice. Tiger Lily. She's got the tiger stripes. Sweet. And then... I don't know the whole neck and... Mm -hmm. Holy crap, yeah. All Casey. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had this one for, I think, like seven years. Seven or eight. Yeah. It's in good shape. It for is. Me now. Like, even for me, like, mm -hmm. um, most of my ukuleles that are that old, you, you know, you can see the wear and tear on it. You took really good care of that one. I think it's just, just been with, yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, my, uh, you know, my ukulele cases aren't exactly the most, you know, protective, but. Which one are you liking more? At the, I mean, I know you've like been through a lot with one. that one, you know. Yeah. Okay, am I bringing out the other one? What are we doing? Yeah. We start off with the no, 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 no. Old let's, Faithful. Let's, okay. let's, let's get a song for me, too. Okay, okay. And then, and then we'll do that. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs>
nice. Thanks. How, beautiful. How, beautiful. How long do you like to keep your nails? Uh, these are too long. Um, just a little bit off the top. Just a little bit off the top. Um, I don't know how to explain that. Natural? <laughs> uh, no, these are uh, acrylics. Acrylics, yeah. So like a week ago, these were perfect, but they're a little long. Yeah, yeah Mike Love gets acrylics too. The power. Yeah, different type of tone and can withstand the, you know, all of that. Yeah. How did you guys <clears throat> meet and start playing together? Well, this is... By the way, uh, thank you, Rachel and Taiwani, for coming up. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So I, uh, I met Rachel. She's actually a DJ, too. So she would DJ at my gig. Uh, at the Hyatt Centric, I would play there every Wednesday, and she was the cute DJ before <laughs> and after. She's also an engineer. I always have to tell everyone that. Wow. She's a civil engineer, and she's only 28. So <laughs> I know she's amazing. So uh, that's how we met. Uh, I was looking for a guitarist, and she uh, also plays guitar. She plays bass. Like, <laughs> yeah, she yeah. does a lot. So that's how we met. That's amazing. Yeah, it's been about like four years that we've been playing together. It's been nothing but good times. <laughs> True. And you guys just uh, recorded an, a new album. Yeah, just uh, came out with Hawaii. Uh, released it September twenty third, so a couple couple months ago. A lot of projects were finished this year, so they're all done now. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing next for the new year. Beautiful. Talk about some of those projects. Okay, so um, I went to Glastonbury, which was like, it was crazy. It was it was beautiful, but what it was like that? COVID. It's a festival, so a Glastonbury festival in the UK. It's a huge festival. It's like a like it's it's like a like a village of like different multiple stages with different types of music. So it was like COVID, like nothing, and then like. 20,000 people all like all at once so we did did that and then uh, came out with a new album um, came out with a bunch of new merch items because before COVID I just had a, a CD that was that was it and then I came out with a new uh, signature ukulele that just got released I think like a week ago that's a lot yeah <laughs> all right well lot. we'll go yeah. over all of those one by one but um what before you guys played that song you were talking about your five string kamaka and you were about to unveil <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'll talk about this this baby first so this is tiger lily and she's been with me for seven years and she got her name because she has the beautiful curly maple tiger stripes uh, on the back uh, this is curly maple, and then on the front, this is cedar, and then ebony, and uh, custom made by Casey, who made my five string tiger lily. And then, I'll get this to you. Thanks. I just got this ukulele this year too. A lot of a lot of projects finished this year. So this is the younger sister, Ka. Her name is Ka, and uh, she's more of like the younger gothic sister to tiger lily so pretty much the same shape um and then she also has a tiger tiger stripes but um casey put like a purple tint to to this ukulele instead and she's still opening up she's still a little immature let's see how she sounds i don't know shy. I don't know if you guys can tell. She's a little like closed up. She's, she's not ready yet. <laughs> Just let her warm up. Is it the same voice? <laughs> um, I think so. Yeah. Cedar and then curly maple. I think he did a different type of lacquering process. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So this is Ka. So. Yeah. Should we do a song with her? Yeah. Yeah. So you can hear the difference. Maybe we do... Can we do a Christmas song? Okay. Yeah. I'll let her take a break. Oh, oh thank you. Let's get her tuned up. 
Thank you. 
God damn. Damn. Nice. <laughs> that was badass. That was really good. That Thanks. was powerful. Pardon my French. Thanks. <laughs> Me. Turn this reverb down a little so we can come back to Earth. <laughs> that was, that was nice. <laughs> wow. So that's Ka. She's new. Yeah, you guys want to try her? <laughs> oh, yes, her? please. <laughs> they must have at least thought about um, introducing like a five string into the line. Not, not the custom, but just a HF3 with a five. Well, it's kind of automatic. It's so natural for anybody that... It, it's not like six or eight string where it actually feels that much different, you know? Yeah. But then you get that extra oomph, especially, you know, if you like the, the low G sound. It just adds maybe a chorus effect. I don't know what you would call it. I know right. how much you love chorus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Taiwani, I hate chorus on ukuleles, but there's sometimes like it might work. This is natural. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 totally. It's uh, beautiful. I like the natural kind. <laughs> I think you. It's like show and tell. I'll give you that. Oh no. That's pretty. We'll just. but this one is a lot clearer in, oh. in tones. Your Kamaka? Yeah. What is the top on your Kamaka? Cedar? Oh, yeah. And we get to try both of them. <laughs> Thank See you. See what you think. Yeah, Kalei and Corey both have cedar. Wow. Oh, really? Cedar top Kamakas. Oh, yeah, that's right. You do have a cedar top one, too. Do? I do, but it's a deluxe, just a normal uh, cedar top. Oh, thank just you. A... Oh, I want to try this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you hear the difference? She's way more mature. It's like super responsive. Like the notes like pop out much quicker. Yeah. Well, how many years was that? True. And yeah. Yeah, I think I've had her for seven, seven years. And uh, not the normal amount of play. A little bit above that. So yeah, it's. Did you? Did you? I mean, it's hard to kind of like register when you're with something daily. But did you register it opening up over time? No, I didn't. Um, I don't really. You know, I don't know if I can remember it that yeah, far right. back, seven years. But I feel like she's always been to the first one, Tiger Lily. She's always been pretty responsive. In that way. I love the binding on your new one. Yeah, Casey did a, a beautiful job. Oh yeah. I mean the whole thing. So talk about the the pickup that you use. I use a Fishman uh, pickup on the side of that ukulele, and the reason why I use that is because of the EQing, which I use every single gig, each room, then use different outside, inside, and just to have that. Um, control and also I like to travel light so I know there's like DI's that do that but less is more when I travel so that's why I use it and I, I know that Fishman's kind of color the sound a little bit too yeah but I mean yeah especially with the 9 volt it's like uh, it's a powerful pickup yeah gives you a lot of the... like percussive like great for that style does this have the mic in it too it does it does yeah okay yeah. All right here it's like the mm -hmm. blend on the top this is like the Pro Blend, or is it the same thing? I think it's the Pro Blend. I'm not sure. Hey, these are really good pickups. <laughs> yeah. I think these might be two. Slightly different. Oh yeah, that is the okay. Oh. The Pro Blend. It might a. It might the be Pro. the same thing. They just changed the. Oh, just the logo name. on it. 
Is that oh. the same? Yeah, it looks. They just call this like something different. On the it's top. like the next generation. Of... Oh, oh yeah, probably. So, so really talk about out. um, talk about the last album. Ooh. What was that process like? That one was thank you. Um, thank you. So usually when I do an album, I like okay, we're gonna practice these songs and then we're gonna go into the studio and play them and record. Oh, all right, this has gotta go. Okay. Engineers, you know. <laughs> Engineers are on time and they've got things yeah, right, to do. Right. do. Yeah. So should we just pause for a second before? So we're gonna say goodbye to Rachel. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks you, for having us. You freaking rock. Yeah, Thank she does. You. That was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you want to give out like your Instagram handle or anything like that? Oh, um, yeah. You can follow me at the Rachel Look. <laughs> Rachel Look is my Look is my last name, so it's just all one word. Like L O O K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Or I'm sure you can find her and me on Time on Ace. Can we do somewhere. one more song before she goes? Can yeah. We do one more song? Yeah. Okay, we'll do one more song awesome. before she goes. Yeah. Oh, let's do it with this one. Okay. I'll do it with this one. So we'll just do a real quick little Christmas song. Yeah. Christmas? Yeah. Let's do the Christmas. <clears throat> okay, the reverb. Here we go. Yeah. So we'll do um, Drummer Boy and Carol. We'll just do that.
Ding ding. Rachel, look, you guys. Double, double. Rachel, look. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks Kaimani, awesome. Thanks. You guys, what a duet. Duo. <laughs> so killer. So I'm going to totally kind of rearrange the oh, rooms and mics, okay. so we're going to okay. break here for a second. He's just oh, like whoa. guitarist, yeah. Like you think we'd make himself. something like like that, but with a mic blend? Oh, that, that's a major game. One does have a mic with it. tone controls. Yeah. So she's the one who actually makes the makes these, and then we collaborated. And I just thought it'd be kind of cool to have like an ukulele earring that represented the local side too. You know, with like the black pearl and like the little gold plates and the silver plated earrings. So, yeah, those little earrings. Can you have them on your website? I do. Nice. I do. I do. Yeah. I do. Thank you. There you go, guys. Super subtle. <laughs> that was so subtle. <laughs> oh, I mean, we got to share with the people out there cool little gifts like that. To, I mean, right now, everybody's got to get somebody to love something. Yeah. But those are great. Yeah, you know what? These are actually like the best sellers out of like the other stuff that I do with the ukulele strap. This is a new baby, like a new a new thing. But the ukulele earrings, they they go like hotcakes. They're uh, they're hot. So yeah. Get them while they're in stock. Yeah, I wanted to like create something. I mean, it's handmade stuff, right? So it's kind of gonna be in and out. Yeah, and more stuff. like me and what I would wear and and um, something different, I think, in the ukulele market. Um, it's nice because they're subtle. It's not like just an ukulele. Yeah. You kind of got to look a little bit. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so what do you what do you got in your hands there? I got a beer. Oh. <laughs> hey, <laughs> there you go. I, got, no. I have a. This is cheers. my my new. Yeah. Cheers, you guys. Cheers to a Monday. Cheers. Thunderstorming Monday in This Wahiwa. is the last podcast of the year for us. Oh. And, um, oh, it is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Going to be gone at the very end. But uh, thank you, guys. Thanks for making it a uh, rocking last episode, too. And yeah. hopefully not the last with you. Got to come up more often. Yeah. Mm. I got to make it up to Wahi Wah. Mm. Cheers. Yeah, I'm, you're such big time. I'm surprised you even made it for this one. But thank mm. you. Yeah. Where are you, are you guys going to go? do a tour for this album and stuff um i kind of did earlier this year um so rachel she's she's got a nine to fiver here so i've got other new musicians that i play with whenever i whenever i tour um but yeah i don't know i'm gonna see i don't really know what i'm doing for 2023 so i'm not sure i finished all of my projects for the most part so i don't well, know that's fun just know. a bunch of tours Lots of tours, <laughs> lots of ukulele earrings and ooks and 
Yeah. I wish I could say I don't know what I'm doing in 2023. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, a couple a lot tours of the here same. and there. <laughs> yeah. What was the um, talk about the writing process a little bit? Sure. So the new album so before like my other albums i would always like okay these are the songs this is what we're practicing let's rehearse let's go in record mix master this album was more like i have this idea like this loose idea it's not done um and just see what happens and it was a lot more expensive that way but it was a different way of perspective of approaching the album process and uh, I think it came out okay. So kind of I like wrote it, out it together. Yeah, it, yeah, it came together. I wrote it, and now I have to like learn the music that happened, rather than like having the music and then recording it. Mm. And I was like, recorded, okay. What did I do? Like, how did this work? So something different. Definitely a lot more Polynesian elements in it as well. So I like it a lot. Thank you. I'm and proud of it. yeah. It's nice to hear you singing more too, and I mean, you know, Thanks. you guys create this like soundscape, and uh, yeah, it's beautiful, and it's different than anything else in the ukulele community or yeah. ukulele world. Like you have a very unique sound. Definitely experimental. Yeah. I re I'd like to do more in the electronic vibe, and just see where that goes. I think just expanding on your pedals will make you like I was showing you the hologram or the Strymon Night Sky or there's like a lot of different ones but like just playing around you, you guys know how it is like you plug into a full board with yeah. in, at times when I plugged you into this it's kind of like it can spark all kinds of creativity too oh, yeah you write songs around kind of the mm -hmm. sound that you're getting at the time yeah. too it's like you end up spending hours on just like trying to find different sounds because then like the first time I played with uh, <clears throat> I don't know was it your reverb or something I remember just taking it out and then three hours later I was like oh I'm, oh yeah that was three hours I didn't, I didn't feel like <laughs> Because there's always like you change a setting and you, you change something mm -hmm. it's like some of the best kind of like like pink floyd songs yeah. or like some stuff you know where it's like using that a little bit more as a fundamental all right so talk about this thin little oh i'm sorry no no, no. well i wanted to add to that i also think the environment that you do that in is really important too so like having those effects pedals but like what are you looking at or you know what's the lighting like I think that would also have a big part of like the, the music. Like the feng shui mm -hmm. in your environment? For me? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Feeling inspired is like, you know, part of it is just the area. It, I don't know. The, yeah, I could yeah, see that. Like mood music. I heard, I don't know if it's true, but Pink Floyd would have like a lava lamp. And so they like created music to the lava lamp. I heard that too. So, nice. it, you know, just having that visual, I think, helps spark that creativity. If you write to, like, a it Sounds like the music. Lava Lamp Company started that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, heard. Pink Floyd wrote songs to this for a decade after <laughs> that. I think you should buy this. kids with a Lava Lamp in their <laughs> Definitely room making horrible music. Videos. And Pink all the Floyd, hippie yeah. fans are like, whoa, you're so right. I oh, my God. It. I can feel it. <laughs> this is totally Pink Floyd. <laughs> wow. But no, I, I mean, like there's something lap, definitely too that that's that's uh, I, I would imagine that would be that would be important. Yeah, I didn't think about that because usually whenever we're messing around with pedals and stuff, it's always at work. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Corey has to go into his closet to play at home. So. <laughs> I do. Just, or just having like a space where joking. you can <laughs> create. Yeah. 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 And. I gotta try that, like actually sitting down. Maybe. Yeah, I kind of want to just sit out and I like should, go hiking or something. I should actually like put some nice lighting in my office. Or you have an ukulele that has built-in effects, so you oh, can yeah. go into the jungle <laughs> and create music. We should do a um, 
another hiking video, but with Taimani. Oh, my That'd God. Okay. Like a short hike. Like <laughs> 10 minutes or less. Whoa. I'm down. What well, does helicopter lift you up on the left? There you go. I'm into that. <laughs> no way. You'd be, uh, you look like you could climb a mountain. Thanks. <laughs> I, I think that's, that's a compliment. A, the best compliment. <laughs> you look like you can climb a mountain. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I do work out. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So talk about this uh, yes. little guy. Yes. So this is another project that I finished. It took about two years to make. This is the Enya Moon Signature Taimane Ukulele. <clears throat> And um, I just, I'm so happy how it came out. It has a thin body. I just fell in love with a thin body. It's easier to travel with and just... I Holding don't... it too is easier, right? Yeah. Mm. Is yeah. it a little bit more comfortable? It's more comfortable. E like, my life for the most part is airports. And so I'm tired of just fighting all the time to get yep. your instrument. So this is like, a, this is a huge deal. And... built-in effects. It's just a game changer. I love it. So yeah, Enya and I collaborated on this. Um, they are a great company. I love the ukuleles that they make. They're beautiful. And um, I like the ready. sound hole. It's a, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. But yeah, just to be able to like be anywhere and add that vibe of a little bit of delay or, or whatever. So it looks like one of those wheels is uh, chorus and delay and then at the top the delay is really fast and as you turn it it gets a little bit slower so you can kind of like adjust the time a little bit yeah and then it has a reverb on there and volume okay. yeah nice but the how come, really how come nice. you didn't do a five string like how you play well what since you mentioned it <laughs> oh <laughs> what Yep, I nice. did the five string. So, you know, I wanted to do the five string. It's really a huge part of my sound. And you wanted to do the four string. So we were like, let's just do both. do both. So, yep, these are the babies. So wait, oh, and you wanted to do four. You wanted to do five. Uh huh. And so how have they been selling? They, the five string has been selling out. So I think there really is a market because there's... I think it's just budding now, the five string ukuleles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think people are really interested. In Wait, it. did they do it five like your five? Like where it's like both low G? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then, yeah, so so if you get this and you want to do uh, an octave G, you can just get a different string and do it mm -hmm. that way too. Yeah. So you do the double low. Yeah. What's up with that? Um. Well, I used to have a six string. And then there was too many strings, so I took off one of the strings, and then it just kind of stuck with me that the low G string, just for my type of style, the bass really balanced out the sound that I was trying to create. You know, like the flamenco and the Spanish, I think really has that balanced guitar-like sound. So. Yeah, for sure. But like, what what uh, like verses an octave for the five? I like to play around a lot on the on the G on the G string and like that's where the passion comes out a little bit, you know. So I just but not I looking for octaves, still maintaining that yeah. single single note kind of runs. So how much do your Enyas go for? Oh, okay. Um, so at the moment, the you can get this acoustically, and this would be four hundred. And then with the amazing built-in pickups, which I highly recommend, uh, is 500. And then the five string um, only comes with a pickup, uh, which is 600. This is basically me. This is my signature that I'm very happy how it came out. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the folks at Enya are real nice. We haven't <coughs> been carrying them yet, but we've been talking about it. Mm -hmm. for the last month or two and especially with you creating this I'm like yeah, we gotta at least get you know some of these models in yeah so yeah I've worked with them for two years now and they're very easy to work with yeah they're really cool and chill 
Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. And then we made these, also these little straps that is nice. Corey's oh, wearing yep. one. Nice. Look at that. They're very comfortable, too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. This is turning okay. into Taimani's QVC. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> got this beautiful hand-woven strap. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> it yeah. probably is, most likely. Mm-hmm. Hand-woven to a certain point. <laughs> what does that even mean? Our car is even handmade anymore. <laughs> no, this is nice though. Microphones are they handmade? Yeah. The <laughs> robots are taking over. Yeah. I wonder, do you think it'd be like AI artists, like musicians? There already are, right? Oh, yeah. But it's it's all very disturbing to an old man like me. <laughs> <laughs> The 45-year-old old man. Old. Pretty sure there's not going to be a robot Taimani. Hmm. How old are we all here? I'm curious. 44. 44? Mm-hmm. Wow. Just turned 35. 35. A few 35. days ago. <laughs> and then I wow. make 35 in March. Oh. Yeah. Nice. I'm right. In between you guys. I'm. No, sorry. I'm sorry. 34. I'm in February. Oh! February. Nice! I'm in February. When I first met Taimani, we were in Kaneohe. Um, this was the upstairs part, too. So this was. It must have been, I'm thinking, over 20 years ago. And she was just a girl, but. She could already play really well, and I think you were already playing with Don Ho. But she, yeah, she came in with her dad to, um, you know, we had Cole out there, and uh, oh, yeah, me, me and me and my dad were like very impressed. Like, oh yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna do a lot of great things. Do you even re- you remember that, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. For me, my childhood through those ages where you were at at the time is pretty blurry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just like little snapshots of... Yeah. We've known each other for so long, so that's why I'm like, where are we in our life now? Where era? What do you think? Yeah. The heart? The heart of life? Oh. Well, 30s, I'm like, if you want to get shit done, you better get it done quickly (laughs) that's kind of but we have enough experience now where we're not just like directionless too Mm -hmm. like 20s you're just like where am i where what's going on i look cute right now but i don't know what i'm doing and then 30s i'm here i feel like get your shit done oh yeah sweet spot and then we'll see from there i still haven't (laughs) I didn't get my shit done in my 30s, so I'm just still working on it in my 40s. That's, I guess that's what's going to happen in the 40s, too, then. <laughs> no, but, like, as as a musician, it doesn't stop. It's not like you have, it's not like being a football player or something. Yeah, that's true, which I'm so thankful that I am an artist and a musician. Because, you know, you can kind of see, watch people's careers, and mm-hmm. like you said, an athlete, you have a certain amount of time. Yeah, and you definitely have a window. I mean, you have a window as a musician maybe to hit the biggest pop or, Mm -hmm. you know, the biggest uh, virality maybe. But it depends. Not necessarily. If you make beautiful music, it kind of can can keep happening. Yeah. You can be old and gray and still have a bunch of fans to play to. And then, like, your body isn't messed up too much either from dancing or mm. being a, an athlete just a little oh that's true yeah just a little yeah. <laughs> so it still hurts but you know it's not as bad yeah <laughs> what you do is highly performative more so than the average yeah. is, has that taxed you over the years um yes i definitely feel it more and i try and take care of myself I, like i'm the grandma when i'm on tour I don't go out. I maybe have like one drink during the show, maybe two. And I just eat healthy, I sleep, and I try and take care of myself. Because tour life is tough. 
yeah. especially yeah, if you dance around a lot too. Mental too. I mean, yeah, just being able to stay positive as you're like traveling through all these places. <laughs> yeah, the airport can test you, especially with lack of sleep. <laughs> but also being extroverted all the time mm. is a, a. You get burnt out. Yeah, it's draining. Yeah. Extremely. As if you're like an introvert, which I think most artists are. Yeah. I don't know if I'm introvert or I don't know if it's either extrovert, introvert. I think I just don't like people. Does <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that fake it well? I don't know. I guess I guess I'm a really good nah, actor. I don't think so. Because <laughs> like, yeah, your friend base is pretty wide and you're always nah. communicating. So I don't buy that not liking people. But yeah. I like the... Um, he likes the cool people. So if you're friends with Corey, <laughs> then you're special. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to say. No. Yeah. But even with Clay, Clay's also very introverted. And Extremely. He's, yeah. And he's gotten way more open. Just it's weird. I never saw doing that. this podcast for like the I never, years. I never felt working that. Working in the store, too. You know. What's that? I don't, I don't think I ever felt that kind of feel from Clay, introverted or anything. Oh. That's cool. Yeah, he's definitely gotten a little more closer to the middle. But you're very extroverted. On stage, when I need to be. Right. On tour. Yeah. It's yeah. like a different hat. Yeah. You know? Different part of you that comes mm-hmm. out. You know, it's like when you're on tour, that hat's on all the way until you get back to your hotel room. Yes. And it's it's something that you got to make it part of you. You know, at first, you're kind of like trying really hard. Yeah. And then once you kind of fall into that, I guess that like that state of mind where it's like, this is me and this is, you know, what I do. And you start feeling comfortable with yourself. I agree. I think I don't know. Did you guys have trouble when you were first performing? I was so scared of talking in between songs. Oh, you. Like twenty. I feel bad for the people that showed up to watch me play. <laughs> I couldn't even look straight. I'm just like I'm looking down. Like, hi, my name is Kalei. <laughs> I'm gonna play this song. Yeah. And then, and just you know, do. It. You feel more comfortable yeah. playing the song, and then you're like, what do I say? Mm-hmm. Like they, I, they're gonna want me to be funny. How do I be funny? Yeah. And, uh, you know what's sad too is like, there's probably times where you've gotten like you drank more than you probably should have just to feel comfortable (laughs) and even though it like takes some away from your playing maybe a bit (laughs) just to like not care as much i think we're all guilty of that (laughs) you want to know the definition of crash and burn (laughs) i'll show you that yeah i think we've all had that one gig where you definitely drank too much Thankfully, it was back when, like, TikTok wasn't happening. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> there was no Instagram stories. There was, no, like, there was MySpace and Facebook right. like, only. <laughs> Never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> but I think you're right. I think, like, in your 30s or you kind of settle into where you are and you've done it a while now. So mm-hmm. this is what I do and this is my story and... You go from there. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more confidence, I guess, in talking. There is. There is. And also, like, accepting who you are. You know, usually it takes a while, you know. I've Especially seen, if you're seen an artist. you throughout the years, yes. though, and you always exuded that confidence, Taimani, even if, like, there may be to yourself you maybe were trying to... Maybe a little to... too much confidence. <laughs> you think so? Bit. Yeah. T- yeah. I you're think... just playing with it already. Yeah, like, you know, my 20s, I was like, you know, I'm going to Thailand, I'm going to play my <laughs> instrument. But, you know, I think going through shit, you know, and experiencing more in your 30s mm. um, has been a good perspective for me rather than, like, tunnel vision. It's more a little bit, how are you affecting other people around you? Mm. you know in a yeah. positive or negative way in the long run too not just like short term so but yeah and then girls in their 20s like whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever that's so just let me get mid. my mocha frappuccino with the caramel walls and whatever <laughs> let's get out of here yeah. you guys are soy so milk old. I just work here alright <laughs> yeah I want to hear you three play something together okay oh, that'll be fun Man, I hate Pro Tools so far because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> what 
Ini apa sih? Oh, what do you want to play? Yeah. You're the guest. You're in the hot seat. That's so sweet. <laughs> um, okay, let's do one off of my album. Pretty easy. Okay. G major. I'm a G sharp major. Seven, I don't know. And then G major, and then it's A minor. And then D. And that's it. Okay. And then we just do that for a while. <clears throat> and then I got some lyrics here and there, but... Bossa Nova feel. <clears throat> it's really nice. Fun. Fun. Uh, 
Mm. Yeah, I like that one on the new album. Mm. Nice chill, that. right? It's, inter- it's interesting I got how that. Taken to the beach. In oh like yeah, really nice. Just I was in the Bahamas. And... That one is for Tahiti, right? Mm-hmm. Bora Bora, right? Uh, yes. Or one of the islands right next to Tahiti, right? Yeah, I'm going there for my birthday actually. Nice Next month, two months, two months from now. What sure. month is it? December. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I need to go there and play that song there. That would be that cool. That needs to happen. You're Maybe that's what too? I was thinking in my hmm? You're in film my it? head when I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Film it. Bring an ook and uh, sing it there. Nice. Yeah. Bora Bora Sunset. Never been, but I hear it's the most paradise you can get that's gonna be tough with uh hawaii and samoa oh you like gorgeous samoa too yeah they have beautiful beaches there too i've been to tahiti once um in papa ete and the ocean is so blue so pretty but samoa also has beautiful beaches there too so i mean we live in the pacific right so paradise is pretty much we got the best I don't, I don't know if though, people in Hawaii to go vacation to Tahiti. Yeah, <laughs> like, right? Like, oh, yeah, this no. is paradise. Like, what? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. You're Samoan, right? Mm-hmm. I'm half. Yeah, half. Thanks to my mom. And then Howley, um, my dad's from Arizona. Nice. So, half, half. And you went to American Samoa? Uh, I both. Oh, so, okay. Taimane, my name is a Samoan name means diamond and then my sister Tewila uh, she her name means ginger so my mom was from Apia Western Samoa uh, so there's Western and then American Samoa they're very different from each other so, How so? American Samoa um, they're more influenced by America so McDonald's Jack in the Box people there are much bigger so what people normally think of Samoans big um, from the from American Jack in the Box, Samoa. or yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Jeez. What they eat, um, and then uh, Western Samoa is more influenced by um, New Zealand, and I think Germany like took over a little bit. That's um, right, yeah. Like in the twenties, and so people there are much like lighter skinned there, and not as big um, compared to American Samoa. That's right. Some, well, so some of like... that might not be diet, but the lineage or whatever yeah possibly some people have like same they hold the same last name as like I don't know what are some last names um not not that you would expect right from um it's not a Samoan last name that's why mm, yeah like Stephanie as a last name um do you know that their beer there by Lima is actually a German company it's a mm. German makes a lot company. of sense yeah Yes. So there's a. Yeah. I'm not saying that they don't know how to make beer or anything. I'm pretty sure the beer is actually good, pretty but, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Heineken kind yeah. of. So. Yeah. I liked it the first time I drank it. Yeah. I can always get it. There's a. Uh, we're part of this beer club in Haleiwa, the bottle shop. Sometimes that'll pop up in the monthly mm-hmm. beer club, and it's always nice. You're in a beer club? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, okay. You should join the club, Tamari. You just have to drive all the way to Hollywood. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> yeah. I do like my spirits, though. Beer? Yeah, beer's cool. I like the spirits. I like wine. Sauvignon Blanc. Wine? Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon. Sauvignon Blanc. Whiskey? <laughs> I like more um, gin. I'm a gin girl. Oh. Nice. Yeah. I like the botanist. That's a good one. You like the botanist. So you like the in your face, like, pow. Yeah. You can get all the herbal fragrances. Juniper. and Yeah. What's a good gin to... To well, get into. I this. like more smoother floral ones. There's one called Mon- Monkey 47, which I... Oh, yeah, I I've know. had that. Yeah, that's a that's a nice one. Um, so, like, gin, I believe, is basically vodka, and then they, like, distill a bunch of herbs with it to give it that juniper, piney smell. Oh. I think that's how they make gin. I could be wrong. So there is one called the Empress, which is a purple tint because they distill it with the butterfly pea flower, which has that, like, purple... Oh. Color. That's the monkey fifty-seven. Uh, no, that's the empress. But oh, the empress. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that. And the monkey forty-seven's the floral, smoother one. I know all of this thanks to my my boyfriend who <laughs> does restaurants, and so I'm just like nice. 
food, alcohol. Uh, okay. I think Lucky Belly's been like in my top five Hawaii restaurants for a decade plus. So good. Sorry. Sorry. Was that, that me? Was like that, that was me. Oh, that was, <laughs> I was like, wait, I didn't that feel anything. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah Every once in a while, there's you hear a stomach growl. If you guys come to Hawaii, go to Livestock Tavern and Lucky Belly. Yeah. They're good eats. Mm -hmm. Super, super good. Really good. Chinatown. It's, it's like the arts district. Something definitely different than what you normally would expect from Hawaii. And that's your boyfriend's uh, own, owning those. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. You're going to get big. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. So I'm, lear well, I'm learning <laughs> all of the like whiskeys and all of, you know, nice. that whole, mm. whole different world. Yeah. Yamazaki. Restaurants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Livestock Tavern has like a, probably the best selection of whiskeys. Livestock Tavern? Yeah. Ooh. They do. They're, yeah. they're right across from Lucky Belly on, in Chinatown there. Yeah, they have a good whiskey selection. More like American, but like nice American. Yeah. yeah. And I think I remember getting some bourbon with like bacon in it or Ooh. something. Yeah, they do. You gotta make fun me stuff. Start growling again. <laughs> Sorry, it's my stomach. My stomach. Normally it's Corey and I's stuff. Like really? our stomachs yeah. are growling because we usually don't eat breakfast or lunch. Oh, what? We just work the whole time. <laughs> Wow. Sometimes I'll I'll eat breakfast, but it's it's a rare rare thing. You guys more. look like you eat breakfast and lunch. Nah, just kidding. I just yeah, eat yeah, all yeah. three meals in one. <laughs> you know, this is the like... result of excessive alcohol. Okay, oh. so basically at six o'clock they have five thousand calories. No, sure. Exactly. Got it's called it. fasting. Right, intermittent fasting. <laughs> yeah. Grumpy with me all day until then. No, that beer, me. man. The beer gets to you quickly. Yeah. yeah. Drinking on an empty stomach, that's where it's at. <laughs> yeah. Just give more space for your back. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Don't waste it, you guys. Before. Right. Not Wait to grind out. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden a six pack is very satisfying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on an empty yeah. stomach. <laughs> if you look at the nutrition facts oh, of beer. There is one gram of protein, 1.5 grams of protein wow. in a bottle really? of beer, specifically this one. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Could get muscular from that beer. Yeah, I just got to drink like 24 of them. Yeah, Damn. one oh. serving you work out. of, of <laughs> right. uh, protein. You have, to, you have to get at least 50 to 60 grams of protein a day. Mm -hmm. So Sounds like a plan. Got to get started early. Yeah. Corey's new diet. Let's drink beer all day. No. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's amazing. Like you, you were popular when you were just a young teenager. Do you ever feel like that messed you up a little bit, or um, you had to like kind of come to terms with certain aspects of it? Definitely come to terms terms with certain aspects of it. It was a tough childhood. I mean, like it's hard to say that when you like live in Hawaii and you know you have a roof over your head and come from like a good place but um that work ethic that was instilled mm -hmm. in me definitely took a toll um but looking back at it i realized that how important that is and i would not be where i am today if i did not have that so it was tough but you overall and Michael jackson kind of have that sort of like <sighs> Overall, I'm happy that it happened, and I probably wouldn't change anything. Yeah. But I'm very proud did your of dad, that. Did your dad kind of ride you for, or was, was he pushy? Maybe. Yeah. But, um, Lovingly. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah, it was, it was a lot, but... I was just, yeah. uh, it's like at that age, you don't really, like have much ambition I don't know that's what I would yeah you're you're interested in like other things mm -hmm. you're not interested in like playing music you'd rather like get ready for the prom like why do I have to miss my prom you know like I have to go and do this but it really set me up for my life now so, did you like, miss your prom for a gig um n not like senior prom but like it was my middle school prom so I don't know you know like those types of things you kind of like 
are important to you like, at oh, the time. Oh, I gotta go to work. You're like 13. <laughs> but at the same time, I was probably spoiled too a little bit. Like, it was a really big opportunity to go to New York and, you know, play in front of certain people. So, you know, there's sacrifice in, in being this musician that I can do this as my job. And he set me up for my whole life. So, yeah, there's sacrifice and, and give and take. Definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. a nice balance. Look, I mean, you're not in the nine to five struggle. And I'm so happy I'm not. Yeah. I'm doing something that, like, this is my path. This is something that I'm passionate about. This is my purpose. You know, rather than, like, seeing people sitting on the side of, like, a restaurant and, like, they're the manager and they're just hating their life. Like, mm. why am I here? What am I doing with my life? So I'm so thankful that I can do this as my job. You know, as much as uh, it sucked with the pandemic stopping gigs and stuff, it, it's like you were telling me, like, you were going around to gigs with just a CD, but it made you, like, kind of stop and think about all these other aspects that you could be able to bring in some income with. But it's mm -hmm. also creative, and it's, like, right in your alley of, you know collaborations and creations and it's nice to see because yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I think you have a lot to offer from <clears throat> from all of that in the years to come too yeah that's what I like about this job is that like okay I'm tired of recording so let me work on like merchandise or like every single day is different like okay I'm going to Maui to play a gig you know so there's so many different aspects of music that you can just kind of be creative with yeah Beautiful. Yeah. So what kind of strings are that, you That, like, currently? got really heavy for, like, five minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did it? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Want to go deeper? No. Uh, is this therapy? Drink more beer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's like... get some more beer. <laughs> this is, like, yeah. the chance for your fans to kind of, like, get to know you a little bit better. True. That way they can relate. Because a lot of times, like, as performers, when people come to concerts and... Yeah. You know, see us perform, they're like, oh, no, like, they're probably so different from me. Oh, no, yeah. I'm just curious about all of this, because yeah. Taimani has always fascinated me. I mean, you're a, you're an amazing artist in, uh, in all kinds of ways, too, you know? Yeah. Like, Thank performative you. and musical, and, yeah, it's nice to see you come out with all kinds of different things, too, that mm -hmm. I think represent you well. Thank you. Thanks. Maybe we could close out with another song. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, okay, I got another one for you. Um, A minor, E minor. Okay. Um, that's it. That's it. Nice. Yeah. I love two chords. <laughs> that's our favorite, the two chords. <laughs> yeah. So the song is off of the new album again, and it's called The After Party. But it's basically, so the idea was like, this is the song that happens after the gig. Or something like, this is what you do at the after party. It's just like a jam. Hence the two chords. Sweet. So let's have fun. Yeah.
after party nice. jam. <laughs> I like that. Cool. Thank you yeah. so much, Taimani. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, hopefully it's not the last time. Yeah, we'll see the next thunderstorming. Ooh. Monday. Well, then that'll be next month. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll see you next week. Then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Wow, that was quick. That was fun. Once we got that going, was... that was pretty quick. Well, we don't have to stop. Any other questions we had? What are some of the, like, have you, like, learned from a flamenco teacher, actually? Or how did you kind of, because you have a lot of, like, really flamenco style yeah. techniques and stuff, like, um, is that stuff you kind of figure it out yourself, or who was it? I mean, I like to call him the king. Jake Shimabukuro was nice. one of my teachers. Um, so he kind of started me with, I guess, the chord. And then um, from there, I like started playing around with like the muting stuff. And for me, just hearing those types of melodies and chords are so exotic coming from Hawaii. So I kind of like took that and like ran with it. And so, yeah, that's kind of how I started that. And then, like, yeah. And then you asked me about strings, too. I'm still on the quest for strings. What strings are those? Um, I think these are Kamaka strings. Oh, oh like nice. the clear nylon ones? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think these are Kamaka. I think these are Savaraz, but I tried the soloist and the flat wound watching your guys podcast you guys have the best when it comes to effects and like oh, toys no. i loved watching that so i'm Thank still you. trying to figure out yeah ukulele strings i've tried worth and ukulogic too so yeah are you um is it like you kind of like them all in a different way but you're just not sure like I, what you like yeah. best i'm still trying to like learn about the ukulele strings because i was with savaraz you know, I'm not sponsored or anything. I was just, like, so, like, you know, set with Savaraz that I never really explored until recently. And they just, have such a... It's great for that percussive style, too. Yeah. There's they, so much definition or articulation with their strings. And sustain. They just sound so good, but they are very squeaky. I mean, it's kind of oh, like yeah. a wound string on your plain strings, in a way. Somewhat. It's like, of course, it's more sustained. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. So then I found, I don't know, I, I during COVID, I kind of like watched your guys' podcast and, okay, let me try this one. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so quiet. <laughs> what have I been missing out on? <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm a girl without a string. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway. Better than being a man without a country. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, man without a football team. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. That's that's my life. <laughs> Stringless. <laughs> yep. Do you ever give that's lessons? Nice. Um, I'll do workshops yeah? whenever I travel, but not like a put like a regular type of thing. Is there a tip no. you could share with our listeners? <sighs> oh gosh. Um, let's see. Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm glad you, no, I'm, I'm glad you, you know, every person has like a thing that they teach. Um, so I learned by ear. So regarding like ukulele, music theory was never like the, I wasn't really good at it. I still try and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I do everything by ear. So for me, like more of like this type of strumming, most people want to learn. So why don't we do something about that? Yeah. Um, so muting. You hold your strings, and then um, I usually use my, we'll start with my um, pointer finger. And then what I normally say is, so you're going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then you just start working on the accent. So down, down, down. And then when you're comfortable with that, then you can go down, up. around with that so but it all starts with down up or just down and 
so I started with this, but then I was like, this is, I don't want to do this. I want to do this. So yeah, you can use um, these four to go down. And then like, what is this? Your thumb going up. So down, up. And then like when you lose it, you just go back to just no accents. And then when you're feeling comfortable, yeah, oh gosh. Rhythm is not my strong point. <laughs> it's been a great year. This is our 55th podcast of the year. Yeah. And wow. I, co I commit wow. to 52, so there's just like, a couple oh, extra. Wow. Yeah. I feel like we're going to sneak one in. <laughs> Before we go, maybe can I get you to sample this Grimes that just arrived? Mm, sure. It's a beautiful mm. instrument. Have you ever played Grimes? Like ukuleles are. Wow. Alcoa. Mm -hmm. Pretty, huh? I, I love Steve's work, and this one is so cool. Gorgeous koa, golly. Yeah, and and to hear like a low end koa too, because koa is always so bright. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's deeper, right? Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. You don't really get that type of low end depth on a koa. So. Yeah, beautiful, and like a wound C string too. That's interesting. Yeah, it's kind of old school. Is it? 
Yeah. I don't think I've seen them before. Yeah. Steve is legend. Very beautiful. We'll, we'll, we'll be bringing you guys more from, from this uke and more customs. Thank you so much. Remember to hit the like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you, Taimani. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the website? Um, Taimani.com. There you go. Easy. All right. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Mahalo, guys. Aloha. <laughs> wow. I want to try that, you. I gotta try.